then you can take the files in there and open them in like RUM or Photoshop. What about PNG? No, no raw files. So that's that's one of the limitations. Also, the maximum resolution is 1600 by 1600 pixels. Relatively small. Okay. So I'm going to go. Uh, now I've made this selection. What I want to do is I want to make a soft edge because around the the hair and the hat, I need a soft edge, whereas uh, other parts I might want a, a harder edge. So if I tap up here to access the selection menu, I can choose refine edge. And what it gives me is a tool where I can adjust my brush size, make it small or large, and actually go and draw along the edge. And what it'll tell the software to do is along the area that I'm drawing, I want a softer edge. So now I'm ready, I have my selection, I'm not going to bother about the areas that I didn't quite get. And I want to extract this from the background. So if I tap Extract, there it is. There it is. The background is invisible, visible, I've got my layer, everything is great. Now what I want to do um, is, it's interesting, but I want to add a little bit more uh, sort of, I don't know, drama to this. Yeah. So I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to add a fade. So I can make it do a fade that goes from opaque to transparent, make, basically make her invisible. And as I adjust this here, it'll control where's, where's the invisibility going to happen. Looks nice. On the top layer. And now what I'm going to do is go to the bottom layer, and maybe I'll, I'll do a different um, effect. I'll go in here, here to the effects menu, and... Uh, do something like direction blur. Well, you can adjust the blur. So it's an interesting mix of both professionals who already use Photoshop but want to be able to do some uh, sort of creative exploration away from their desk. And also, there are a lot of people who are just hobbyists who love to do this kind of work. They're not doing it for a living. They're never going to do it for a living. But they, they just enjoy doing this sort of thing. And for them, it's a, it's a tool that gives really a much easier feature set, easier to understand feature set. They don't have to spend the time. Yeah, they don't have to invest the time to learn Photoshop on the desktop. So you said to us that there's a high print integration, right? Yes. Yeah, so if I want to print this, I can tap here and say, I'm going to save, it, save this as a project. So I'd start it as a tutorial, so I'll say, uh, close the tutorial, but save it as a project. It goes out to this uh, organizer view where I have all of my projects that I've created. And I can just go here and tap send to printer. Select that one. I could do multiple images if I want. Yeah. Okay. It'll bring up the printer options through uh, through AirPrint, and I can just choose the printer, choose the number of copies, and it's a print. Yeah. Okay, so we have our print printer down there, and what's yeah, going to print? The printer's over there, and that that will print in a in a minute or two. Okay, and what about the sharing? We can share it to Facebook. Yeah. Here. So the, also under this menu here, we can. Save it directly to the camera roll, so export as JPEG, share it to Facebook, attach it to an email. Okay. Um, and we also have uh, a cloud-based service oh, that we can upload to the Creative Cloud for synchronization to the desktop. Is it uh, for free? Um, the, there's limited Creative Cloud functionality that you get with the purchase of the app. Okay. So uh, limited storage and, and functionality. And then there will be premium uh, features in the Creative Cloud that actually we haven't announced yet. Okay. And then you said that it exports both in JPEG and uh, PSD, right? Yes. So you can uh, keep your um, layers and work it on, on the image on your Mac, right? That's right. So if you, if you export it as a PSD and bring it into Photoshop, Photoshop will recognize these layers. And even if the layers have uh, blend modes uh, applied to them or what have you, Photoshop can continue to work on that. And you can even uh, export from Photoshop uh, 5.5 to iPad application, right? You can export from Photoshop and import the PSD uh, here, yeah. but the layers will be flat. Oh, okay. So is it all? Kind of?
no, more functionality. There's well. lots, lots of functionality. Lots of functionality. Yes, yeah, and there's like I could go on for hours. <laughs> you want? You want to? <laughs> no. Just a few more. <laughs> okay, so let's do uh, one. one. Let's more. do one more thing. So let's do. Let's do a different tutorial. Okay. Let's do this one where we take this image and we go from a nice photo of a truck in the field and we actually make it look like an antique photograph. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> so I'm going to go into the effects menu and I'm going to look for one called Sunny Afternoon. Stylize, I forgot what this, where this is actually. Effects photo sunny afternoon, there we go. And I'll tap next so I can follow along the uh, tutorial. Set so the intensity to about 50%. One of the things that I'll show you is that in addition to the easy to find sliders and such, there's also some precision built into the app. If I tap the field like this, then I can actually enter an exact value. So we have a extra precision level of, uh, of feature set sort of underneath the surface. It looks great for people who want to work on the go. Yes. Absolutely. For example, I always get a train uh, to get university every day, so when I gotta work on this stuff, you yeah. know, it could be useful. Okay. So I'm gonna do one more effect on this. I'm gonna go in here and choose old sepia. So this will make it look like a sepia tone image. And I'll set it to 80% intensity, uh, 90%. So saturation. Intensity. Finally, I'm going to do some level adjustment. So this is just like uh, Photoshop levels, a little bit different UI, but same functionality. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to lighten the midtones a little bit. And the tutorial is completed. So I've turned the original photograph into this old sepia tone. It does also, by the way, have uh, 60 levels of undo. So I can step back and also redo. 60 levels. Yes. Ok, dunque per ora sembra essere tutto, dallo stand di Adobe abbiamo potuto accurare che l'applicazione è realmente eh, interessante e che ci permette di eh, eseguire molte funzioni che anche la, la, il software desktop permette e eh, dunque per ora da Spazio e Euronics Italia assieme a David un saluto.